Welcome to the third video in the ClickSense Beginners Workshop series. In previous videos we covered navigation, data modeling and some basic charting. In this video we're going to focus on building visualizations for the various sheets of our application. Before we get started, there is one thing I wanted to touch on regarding the data modeling. Let's actually open up our data manager in a separate tab using this button here. If I click here to add a data source and go to my data files just to select one so we can actually access our add data button down the bottom here I wanted to show this option here now you will remember from our previous video that Click went through a process of profiling the data understanding the nature of the data so that the Click cognitive engine can make suggestions in terms of how tables need to be linked and how uh, charts might be displayed once you drag data elements onto the page if you don't want Click to do the data profiling um, and you may want to uh, avoid that for very large data sets because it'll take some time you can actually turn off data profiling here before you click on the add data button so just note that that can be quite handy to use for uh, large data sets when going through the data manager here here we are back at our dashboard sheet earlier we talked about the click insights board and this is a capability which allows you to leverage the click cognitive engine to gain some initial insights about the type of data in your application now that we've loaded some aggregatable fields into our data model we can run the generate insights to see some of the suggested charts that click will come up with and you can see here that Click is suggesting that perhaps we might want to sum up sales for City, which is an interesting visualization, something we've actually already started in our application. We have here the sum of sales by address, which is uh, going to correlate to each of the store addresses. So maybe that's not quite how I'd want to do it. I could change that to by customer. Coming down here, we see a Pareto chart showing us the contribution of product code to overall sales, as indicated here in the description and then showing us the sum of sales by order date so clicks coming up with some interesting visualizations here maybe I'd like to see this by customer perhaps so it's quite easy to change how click is coming up with the insights here by saying perhaps sales by customer and notice now that click is coming up with some slightly different suggestions in this case showing us the breakdown of total sales and here the contribution of customer to the overall sum of sales so the insights board can be quite handy to come up with these sort of uh, understandings very simple uh, visualizations of your data to get you started in visualizing and in fact from here you can just click on add to sheet and it will add the chart to the current sheet or we can create a new sheet to add that chart and then we can continue to change the properties of that chart uh, on that sheet so it's a great way to get started with uh, building out your visualizations we're actually going to go back now to our dashboard here and we're going to do this manually as we're essentially replicating that initial application that you saw in video one which will be our completed click application I'm just going to make some space at the top of my dashboard here for our KPI objects and Note if I go to my list of fields here and select the orders table when I grab my sales field and just drag it across onto my dashboard here Click has understood the nature of our data through that data profiling process when we built our data model it knows that sales is an aggregatable field and therefore probably the most likely way I might want to visualize this is using a KPI object so notice that it's automatically come up with that that's very handy but let's say that in the future someone changed the definition of sales they said I want to handle discounts or perhaps tax differently what I'd want to be able to do is change that calculation logic in one place and have that update throughout the entire click application now you can actually do this using the click master library so let's delete this particular KPI object here and we'll go across to our master items and this is essentially where you can embed all of that business logic so that it can be changed in one place it's not so important for Click Cloud as self-service is not something that's enabled through Click Cloud, but with Click Enterprise, this is very important for the self-service capabilities as once you define a subset of dimensions here, a subset of the available fields for your users to interact with, and a set of business calculations, you can enable your users to easily build their own visualizations, their own personal charts using these 
this master library and that means they don't have to actually understand or replicate or perhaps make mistakes with any of the calculations as they do that and it ensures that everyone through the organization is using the same set of business logic. So let's actually go ahead and create some of these dimensions here, this subset of fields we want our users to work with. Now I'm going to add in the product category here, our city, and it's just a matter of selecting each of these fields here and then clicking on add dimension. If I come down to order date, notice that also as click profiled our data through that uh, data manager utility, it's exploded out our order date into multiple components here. So not only can I add my order date to visualizations or tables and such, I can also leverage perhaps the calculation or uh, extracted value of the year from that. So I'm going to add this to my library here and just change the label that's associated with that field. And I'm also going to add in the month because this will be used both of those in fact on our line chart. And the final field I'm going to add is our product code, like so. So as easy as that, I've created a series of dimensions. Um, you can also create hierarchical dimensions if you want to do so using this uh, option here. But I haven't got any as part of this uh, particular application, so let's just skip over that. Coming down to our measures, I want to come in here and create a calculation in this case for total sales, just as you saw Click uh, automatically did. I'm going to leverage the expression editor because this gives us a lot more uh, syntax checking and that sort of thing and some wizards which you'll see in one moment. So from our expression editor here, I can create my expressions in a number of ways. So let's firstly look at how we can use these drop downs and uh, calculation wizards over on the right hand side here. So I want to go to my orders table and find my sales field. There it is there. And I want to do a sum aggregation. So it's as simple as then just clicking on insert once I've made those selections here. And note that click inserts that calculation for me. Once you get familiar with the various functions and you will find them very familiar indeed because in most cases they're pretty much the same as what you've probably used in Excel. If I just simply type in SU for sum here Click starts to give me prompts here to say, well, I've found a bunch of functions that you might be looking for, and it's actually the sum function I was after here, but I've also found a bunch of fields that you might have been trying to type here, and it's providing suggestions for those. So to select sum, I just click on that there. As I put down my bracket, I then get a uh, syntax prompt here to show me how to use this particular function, and the field I wanted to sum up was sales. Note, as I begin typing that, I get the prompt there for sales. Note also that there is a difference with capitalization. So here, as I type sales with a lowercase s, notice it's in black. It's showing me that, yeah, I haven't sort of found a field name here. And in fact, clicks highlighting that down here saying, no, nope, that doesn't seem to be a field name I recognize, but it's suggesting sales with a capital S here. So capitalization is important when referencing your fields there. And I'm going to call this calculation total sales. There's a number of other features here within the definition of measures that I could leverage, such as the label expression, the descriptions. Uh, let's actually give a measure color here just to show how this can flow through to your um, KPI objects or your use of these on charts. So I'm going to assign purple for my sum of sales calculation here. I won't go into the remainder of the, uh, the options there. Um, Perhaps just to mention that for the tags here, when you have a lot of measures or uh, dimensions within your business library, you can tag them. So say these ones are associated with the finance function, these are associated with the sales function, for example, and that just helps you search for and find particular things quite easily. Let's click on create there to create our total sales calculation. I'm also going to create our sum of costs and I'll just type these in quickly. for our total costs measure. Our profit I can easily do using a pre-calculated field here called profit, so I don't actually have to deduct costs from sales in this case. And I'll call that one total margin. And finally I'm going to create the sum of profit divided by the sum of sales as that represents the percentage margin and I can call that margin percent create 
And there we go, as easy as that, we have created a series of dimensions in our master library and a series of measures, which now has cert embedded certain business logic into our application. So at that point, I'm going to end this video, and in the next installment, we will see how quickly we can build out our visualizations using the ClickSense master library. So I hope you join me then. Thank you for watching.